Hi, this is Mark at LearnHowToGarden.com and today we're doing an update on our no-dig bed. We constructed this earlier in the year and we're now on the 20th of January, so this is a mid-winter update. If you're watching us anywhere else other than Learn How To Garden, there will be a link under this video that will pop you over to our website. If you enter your email address, that means that every month you'll get our free monthly newsletter, which also has sort of growing tips in it. Uh, and it also means that every time we pop up one of our videos, you'll get an email telling you that we've got another one live. It's the 20th of January. The rest of Britain is covered in snow. I'm very fortunate. I'm in the deep southwest. We have no snow. In fact, we've got a glorious sunny day. Well, it's not glorious as in middle of summer, but it's nice. It's crisp. It's clear. There's a blueness to the air that makes you want to get out. According to the weathermen, I've got about a two hour sort of gap to do this. So uh, I've actually been constructing another deep bed today, which is why I'm slightly muckier than I normally am when I film these. Um, but I thought it was a great time to just sort of go through. This bed took us less than 30 minutes. And the first thing I want you to notice is that the soil level has dropped as it settled, as the worms have worked through it, as the bacterial life has got to work, the soil has settled. So one of the things that we're going to do is we've got some of the compost just out of our compost bin and we're going to start topping up the areas that are at this moment in time sort of bare of crops. But I wanted to show you that with this small space, you know, we've sort of got, it's about 10 feet by three. Um, even in the smallest urban garden, you can get things. Now, our cabbage, I think, great. There are only three of us that I'm growing for at the moment at home. My other three sons have left home, thankfully. Uh, I wish they'd leave their bank accounts uh, in as good a sort of repair as uh, they left their bedrooms. Unfortunately, I still appear to be uh, bailing them out wherever they are. But I digress. I'm growing for three, so the actual spacing of these cabbages is quite important. If we can focus in here, you'll see that the heads are about fist size. That's the solid head in the middle of the cabbage is about as big as my fist. Also, the leaves around the edge I use. So this is a perfect size for me to grow. I could grow these cabbages at three times the spacing and they'd be like footballs. We've all seen them at our local agricultural shows. But I'm not sure I need a football sized cabbage. I wouldn't use it all in one sitting. It would sit there and possibly sort of end up feeding my chickens or my goats. So the spacing of these was critical to get vegetables the size that I want to use. Parsley is still going along beautifully. Still great for sort of uh, parsley and oil pesto is uh, wonderful. I tend to drizzle that quite a lot into sort of my soups. Um, we've got the turnip tops which again uh, we just pick as we go along and then as we come back in the bed we've got our kales. These are two of my must-have winter greens and the reason is this. Can you see we've got like a walking stick and we can see if we come right in here where these leaves have been cropped. This is um, red boar kale, this is Cavallo Nero, the Tuscan black kale. And what is brilliant about these is that you don't pick the whole thing, you just literally take these off with the amounts that you want. So it's like having a continuous larder. You can just pick exactly what you want. You don't need to take the whole lot like we will with the cabbage. And this stem just gets elongated, more small leaves come and I prefer the small leaves. I think they're tenderer. Uh, I think they have a nicer taste, um, much quicker to cook. So these are sort of two of my absolute faves. And we literally have been cropping the red boar, as you can see, the Cavallo Nero. Uh, we haven't had for a couple of weeks, but uh, it does make a, a beautiful, you can make some wonderful sort of cabbage sauces or kale sauces that go with pasta. I know it sounds strange, but northern Italy is full of these sauces. Any decent Italian cookbook will have them in. If you wonder what this is around here, we've had a couple of winter storms, a lot of seaweed blown up on the beach. I am a huge fan of seaweed. If you're anywhere near a beach, just get a black bag and pick some up. And it's just laid on top of it. Remember, we're not going to dig this. We're just layering more and more on top. And when I talk about layering, really, it really is <laughs> as easy as this. I know this is probably like showing you how to grow eggs. You take your compost and literally just layer it up. This is out of a compost heap. I hope we've all got a compost heap. If you can hear the barking, I think it's a dog fox in the wood next door. 
and literally just build up the layers. And we'll go along and between here we'll build it up. I'm really happy with this bed. If you haven't seen how we constructed it, I'll put the link be below this video. It took just over 30 minutes and it has produced all summer. If you're new to gardening, if you've never seen No Dig Gardening, have a look. Everybody can have one of these. If you know someone who thinks, I haven't got the time for gardening, this is what they should be doing. I think, you know, as we get more and more sort of um, aware of what's happening to our food, you know, who knows? The only thing I can say for certain is for all of those in the UK, there are no horses in this deep bed. It's a bit of an in joke directed at one of our large supermarkets that's been popping horse meat into its burgers. Anyway, that's all I wanted to say. Quick update. Thanks a lot for watching Learn How to Garden. Um, anything you want to ask, don't hesitate to pop a comment uh, under the uh, video and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Hopefully this weather will stay with me, but I've got a feeling that uh, I'm going to have a really sharp frost tonight, which will be good. It'll be good for the beds, clear up some of those uh, little beasties that are lurking. And uh, my seed catalogues have been and gone. My seeds have now arrived. So I'm starting to feel it's a new year and we really are going to grow even more fantastic veg this year. Thanks a lot for watching.